Hi, everybody. It's Jason Falls. I want to talk to you today about influencer marketing tools. Uh, if you've read Winfluence, my book, you know that I didn't spend a lot of time breaking down each of the major tools and talking about their feature sets and the differences and pricing and all that good stuff. I mentioned several of them throughout the book, but there are other places out there like G2 Crowd where you can find really good crowdsourced information uh, about the features and things like that. But if you also noticed in the book, I mentioned one tool rather frequently, and it's because I use it, and that tool is Julius. I've used it for a couple of years now. We selected it at Cornette after reviewing a, a probably a dozen or more platforms for a client a couple of years ago. I really like the user experience. I think it's very intuitive and easy to use. I like the fact that it does basically the four major things that you would want an influencer uh, marketing tool to do. It helps you discover influencers for your campaign. It helps you uh, find them, reach out, engage them. It's got contact information and things like that in it. Um, it also allows you to manage campaigns with them to, uh, you know, upload a contract, have them sign off on it, you know, put in the deliverables that are going to come out of the campaign and track them. And then because it allows you to track them, it, of course, can turn around an ROI report broken down not just by campaign, but by individual influencer or even individual piece of content. I honestly think you owe it to your brand, your agency, your business to do a demo of Julius because it is a very powerful end-to-end -end solution. I use it, I like it, and I think you will too. So what I wanted to do today was actually show you a little bit of the tool. Um, you need to do a demo to see you know, deeply how it's going to work for you, but I want to show you a few bits and pieces of it so you'll see why I like it so much and why it's such a powerful tool for you to use. So let's dive in and I'll show you why I like Julius. So once you log in, the first thing you're going to want to do is find influencers. And, you know, when you land on the, you know, sort of main page here, uh, the search page, it already has, you know, influencers here, but you haven't filtered any of these down. So we're going to start out by searching. Now, let's say uh, I'm going to search for influencers who are relevant to bourbon, right? You'll notice as you start to type in the search bar that a bunch of options already comes up basically based on that keyword. So I have a campaign set up that has bourbon in it. There's also a list in the system, which I'll show you about in a minute. But you also have, you know, Instagram handles and other social media handles. You have influencer profiles where bourbon is in their uh, username. So this is kind of a quick way to navigate around. But what I want to do is I want to know people who are interested in bourbon. So I'm going to look at this interest level and that's going to bring up a bunch of people who uh, have bourbon in their uh, interests, uh, in their profiles on different social networks. Uh, you know, maybe their content has a lot of bourbon content in it. Now, the first thing I want to show you before we start to filter this down is you have something unique to Julius here in that they have what are called enhanced only profiles. The reason this is unique is because unlike other uh, social media and uh, influencer marketing tools, uh, Julius actually has a team of researchers and experts who actually go out and uh, research the influencers and manually enter a lot of their information. So they've got a research team that's out there making sure that some of the profiles, not all of them, because you can uncheck enhanced only and then get, you know, people whose profiles have been sort of automatically pulled in uh, out of the social networks. Uh, but the enhanced only profiles means these people have been vetted by the Julius team. I rely on this enhanced only a lot that automatically weeds out a lot of people that I don't necessarily uh, you know, want to deal with or want to, you know, try to go, go through and, you know, make sure that they are real people, make sure that their followers are real, all that kind of stuff. So the enhanced only profile is very important and it's unique to Julia. So I'm going to leave that checked, but I could uncheck it if I wanted to, you know, bring in more options. Now, the next thing you see here, is people like Ray Lewis, or if I scroll down the page a little bit, Aisha Tyler. I mean, these are actors, actresses, athletes, celebrities. That's not who I'm looking for for maybe an online you know, digital campaign that might be micro-influencers. So Julius does a couple of things to allow you to filter down. First of all, you've got this influencer filters up here, in addition to these big demographic things up here, which are more about your audience. So if you go over here to the influencer filters and click that, you can come down and you'll see the profile type, which which is the enhanced only, but then you have influencer type. And if you open that up, you have an option of digital or celebrity or both. 
obviously this is kind of wide open. I'm going to filter down just by digital influencers so that people who are celebrities are kind of out of the consideration here. I only want people who are online content creators. Now I'm automatically already starting to see a much more relevant list and I've just clicked one button. But let's go back and look at all the different ways I can filter this. So I've got my profile type enhanced only. That's there. My digital influencers are selected. What if I'm, uh, you know, basically trying to find someone, uh, an influencer who is in a certain geographic area um, or because I, I'm a local business. So I can filter by the city of Atlanta and let's go within 100 miles because I know that online influence doesn't necessarily know a lot of geographic bounds. So I'm going to save that. And now all of a sudden I've filtered down to two options. I've got Bourbon Fines and Southern Bell Bourbon. Now I can com you know, continue to drill down um, and if I have a longer list and get to much different people, but if I've only got two to deal with, then that's great. But let's take out Atlanta, George now and say, I'm, I'm looking to influence people around the world or around the country. So I've got, I can take location out. I can also then filter down by topic. I want people who write primarily or post primarily about food and drink. Uh, maybe I also want uh, sports and outdoors because that's sort of a bourbon lifestyle thing. Uh, and let's say that um, animals and wildlife falls in there too. So I'm going to hit save on that one and it's going to filter down even more. These folks, you'll see that it refreshes there as I do that. And now I'm filtering down my list uh, even more. I have, a, I have 25 results now. That's a manageable group of people to work with. But you can also go through here and and in, and filter your influence by their age, their interests, of course, their genders, the brands that they might have worked with in the past, what their pricing, which platforms they're notable on. If I really want to focus my stuff on Instagram, I can come in here and say, I really just want people who are notable on Instagram. And again, it filters down even further. So now I've got four people on my list and I've got some people that I can go after. Once I get this filtered list down together, I can add all of these people to um, a list actually in Julius that is really used probably best for collaborating. So if you have multiple members of your team, you can start adding people to a bourbon influencer list and your team members can do that too. So if I want to do that, I'm just going to select these four. I'm going to sit, uh, pull, pick add to selected list and then I'm going to select a list. And I've got bourbon influencers here as one of my lists already set up. So I'm going to add those influencers. So now when I want to go find that list, I can just come up here to lists at the very top. I can click on bourbon influencers and I can see the bourbon influencers that I've added to this list. Again, this is more of a collaborative feature. Um, I haven't done anything uh, you know, with these influencers yet, like added them to a campaign, which again, I'll show you how to do in a moment. But now let's get to know these influencers to see if we really do want to add them to a campaign, right? I've got them on a list so I can organize them, but let's get in and find out a little bit more about them. So if I come in here to Beautiful Booze, let's look at what an influencer profile looks like. So this is where you can see on the, on the overview, you can see a high level look at all the different social networks, uh, including their blogs that they have and what type of reach they have through those platforms, which is the follower count, of course. Uh, you can also see, you know, maybe some sponsorship opportunities. Some of these might be actual pricing, they're probably just going to be ballpark figures where you can sort of think you can start with. You also have some contact information down here. I don't want to scroll down because I don't know that Natalie wants her email address all over the web on my YouTube video. Uh, but you also have uh, some uh, demographic profile of the audience. Obviously, Beautiful Booze is 8.67% uh, of her audience is in New York, but she also has impact in a bunch of other markets that might be important to me as well. But let's look across the top here because you can drill down. This is just the overview page. You can drill down even further. If I go look at her about section, it's going to tell me a little bit more. There's the link to her website slash blog, a little bit more about her, her interests that she's posted on various social networks. If I've done anything within the Julia system, like reached out to her, added her to a campaign, started working with her, that is going to come into the activity tab. I've added her to my uh, bourbon influencers list. So you can see all of the activity that I've had in Julius tied to beautiful booze. And so now I can come back here and track and know all of the times I've outreached to her, et cetera. And I can add to this as I go along. The most important thing for me though, is I can review her content really all in one place. Cause if I click on this posts tab and it takes me over to her content, 
Now I can start to look at all of her content and you'll see that most of these posts are Instagram, but if she's added a new Twitter uh, a post or a tweet or a Facebook post or a YouTube video, it'll all come in here as well. She's spending her primary time on Instagram right now, but you'll notice I can hover over and read the captions. I can see the engagements uh, and the engagement rate on each of these posts. So now I can really start to dig in and say, okay, she's got a really good engagement rate. It looks like, uh, you know, a little low here, but four over here, 4.7 here. There's a, you know, 1500 people are liking this. So we're getting some good numbers here. And she's got some really beautiful photography, some good content. She's in some of the pictures. So she's, uh, you know, certainly very personable. Um, I can actually even, you know, click through to this particular post, uh, right here in, uh, Julius. I can just click, it'll open up a new window and then I can get in here and start looking at things like comments and things like that to see, does she engage with her audience? Is she going back and forth with them? Um, you know, are other people talking? She's in here in the comments. So that's good. That means she's engaging with her audience and uh, is present and accounted for with them. And that means she's probably going to be more genuine, uh, you know, more persuasive to them if she has something to say from that particular perspective. But I can spend, you know, five or 10 minutes right here with her content in this posts tab and know, okay, this is someone I definitely want to add to a campaign. You can also look at the uh, different metrics around uh, the influencer's engagement rate by clicking on the engagement tab. It'll show you the most engaging organic posts and the most engaging sponsored posts. You can get a little bit of an idea of uh, how that engagement compares for organic versus sponsored. You can also look at how successful she is at driving engagement during the time of day or the day of the week. So you can use that to potentially inform what type of engagement you have with her and where she's going to post. You can even divide all of this by platform. The reach tab will take me over and show me even more information about her reach on each network, uh, how her follower count has grown over time. So I can see if there's anything weird or unnatural in her follower count, her average engagement rates or the number of people she engages with over time. So I can get a better idea of, again, how effective she's going to be at engaging her audience. And again, I can drill down by platform as well, not just look at the overall so that I can see how that is growing over time and how she's doing. I like this tab in particular. This is where I can find out more about her audience and how her audience compares sort of in indexes uh, compared to the rest of the web. So obviously I'm, I'm a spirits industry person. I'm looking for what part of her audience is 21 plus. Well, Julius has added that. So 98.18% of her audience is over the legal purchase age of alcohol across most states in the United States. That's an important thing for me to see, but I can also look and see where her audience indexes and where the majority of her audience is in terms of their age, their income, uh, statistics, uh, and you know, sort of, certainly gender, ethnicity. You can also go in and, and look more closely at the locations and see by city and by state, where are this person's followers? So again, if you're lo locally targeting locally for a campaign, you can actually drill in and be really smart with the influencers that have a bigger impact on the geographic footprint that you're trying to reach. The health tab is also one that's very important. You can actually run a health report and Julius will go in and actually do uh, an on-demand uh, analysis of Beautiful Booze's audience and come back within 24 hours with a report that tells me this is how confident I feel uh, that uh, this person has real followers, that they have real engagement, that they're not uh, committing some sort of influencer fraud. So this is an important uh, sort of audience health report that will allow you to make smarter decisions once you get down to it and need to decide which influencers you're actually going to engage. It's really going to be really important for you to run those reports to make sure you have confidence in that audience. The brands tab is obviously the brands that she mentions, the brands that maybe she works with. Uh, you can go through and look at the engagement rate, the average engagements on those types of posts, and know a little bit more about who she's endorsing, who she's talking about, what other brands she's you know in, engaging with. Uh, or engaging her audience around so that you can see, is it a good uh, engagement for you to uh, partner with someone based on, is she using your competitors, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then there's the related tab. And I love this because I don't have to go, uh, you know, do more searching and more filtering to find some really good ideas for other influencers that I might want to reach out to because I can see which accounts influence beautiful booze. Um, I can also see which accounts be beautiful booze influences. So now all of a sudden I've got this six degree of separation thing going here, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, a, a network circle out of people that she influences that I know maybe I'm going to influence them if I partner with her, but maybe I also could partner with them if they are similar accounts. There's also similar influencers here, apartment bartender. There's Elliot. He's a really good cocktail uh, guy out there in the, uh, in the uh, cocktail space. Uh, some of these others I recognize too. Jackie, I've, I've done some outreach with her before. So these are people, again, that are similar to Beautiful Boo. So if I like her, now all of a sudden I've got an easy grid to find a few more people just like her. Okay, we talked about lists earlier, and I showed you my bourbon influencers list, but this is, again, more of the collaboration of let's put some options out there so that we can go back and look at each one of them one by one and see if they make sense for our campaign, because that's what's next. So if I have one that I want to add to a campaign, I'm going to select them, and I'm going to add them to a campaign. So I'll add selected to a campaign. I have a campaign in here for bourbon exposure. That's what I'm trying to get for my brand. I'm going to add this influencer to the campaign. Now what that does is it obviously puts the influencer into the campaign list. And I've got a campaign set up here. I've even got flight dates for it to run. Um, I've got a budget of $20,000. So let's drill into the campaign so you can see what that looks like. Your campaign uh, details page, your overview, gives you a really quick glance at all of the influencer statuses. So if you've got a bunch of somebody you haven't outreached to and you've just put them in the campaign, that'll be here. If you are communicating with them, it'll show up in contract, scheduled, tracking, etc. What you can do here within the campaign management system is you can actually send messages within the Julia system to your influencers. It'll track everything right in here. It'll track responses. It'll track if you want to send them contracts. You have the ability to upload contracts within their document management system so the influencer can sign and upload it back. And now you've got all your paperwork taken care of. You can actually go into the deliverables area and say, you know what? I just added beautiful booze to this. I have a contract with her, let's say hypothetically, and I'm going to add a deliverable because she says that she is going to post uh, a social media post on, let's say, uh, TikTok, uh, and that is going to be on May the 4th, and she is going to charge me $450 for that. And so now I have a new deliverable added to my campaign. You can see that it's there. It's scheduled. Uh, and then I can go back and manually add a social link once it goes live. Or if I've coordinated well with her and given her my campaign hashtags, because it's programmed in here on a date, the Julia system will go out and actually pull that post in. So you'll actually start to see everything come together in your overview page. When you actually have a campaign come together, you can scroll down and you'll see you've got deliverables scheduled, but you'll also start to see um, all of the campaign details will come to life and show you what you're getting for each post, each influencer, etc. as an ROI of what you're spending in your campaign. So you've got all sorts of abilities within the campaign management system to be able to handle basically soup to nuts. Everything you would need to outreach to the influencer, settle up a contract, agree on deliverables, uh, program those deliverables into, deliverables into the system and then track them automatically so that you can see a return on investment for what you're doing. Ultimately, this is a really simple way to organize all the different social post deliverables that you're going to have for your influencers, be able to track them, be able to tie a dollar figure to them that you're spending to get that social post, which allows you to start to calculate some degree of return on investment. It may not necessarily be correlated to sales because you're not tying in sales data here, but you can look at, we got this much reach, we got this much content, we got this many 
thousands of people to see what we're doing for this amount of money. So you can start to calculate cost per post, cost per engagement, uh, cost per thousand people reached or impressions. So this, again, helps you measure the ROI, the return on what you're getting out of your influence marketing campaigns. One other thing I wanted to show you, I came over here to my lists and I have this list of Mother's Day people put together for a client, but I wanted to kind of show you something that I think is really cool so that you can sort of see how your lists of people, um, you know, can how you can really analyze them. So there's a couple of different views up here uh, in your list function. Uh, you can actually put them on a board view so that you can say, okay, uh, I am reviewing, uh, let's say, uh, Brigitte, I'm going to put her in review. Um, I've already reviewed and approved uh, Ariel, so I'm going to put her over here. So as you're starting to sort of elevate or you and your client are collaborating to elevate uh, each of the influencers into, yes, we want to use them, you can actually put them in here and if you say, you know what, uh, this one isn't going to work for me, so I'm going to put them in rejected, right? You can do that. Your client can do that. The people who are collaborating with you here. You can also look at their posts view so that you can go in and very quickly see how the this list of influencers content kind of comes together and aligns with one another. It, it also gives you a really fast, easy way to see what they're posting now so that you can go in and see all of their content, review it all in one place. Again, as you're making a decision to whether or not you want to actually add them to your campaign. And then here's my favorite one. If I'm looking at a compiled list of people that I'm considering in Julius, I click on list data and now look at this. I can say of the people that I've put on this list, if these are the people I'm going to bat with for this campaign, I've got aggregate numbers of following, following by platform. I've got an income array. I've got a gender array, ethnicity, age, etc., so that I can go back to my client or my boss uh, or just have it as good knowledge for myself that I've picked a really good list of influencers that are going to have a really big impact on the audiences that I want to have an impact upon. So again, this is in the list function as you're deciding who you want to use, but the tools are here to help you select better influencers and do a better job of executing your influencer marketing campaigns. So you can probably see why I like using Julius. It's fairly intuitive and easy to use. It's very powerful in terms of discovery and organization of your influencers. It has really nice campaign features, and it ultimately helps you get to a better explanation of what is the return that you're getting out of your influence marketing efforts. So I do think, and I'll say this again, and I'll say it over and over again, you're going to hear it a lot out of me over the coming weeks. You owe it to your business, your brand, or your clients to do a demo of Julius. You can do so at jason.online slash Julius. Click through that link, type it into your URL, click through on the links around this video so that you can get to that. Book a demo, check it out, see if it's going to be a good fit for your brand. I use Julius. I like Julius a lot. I think you will too.